It is a glorious September Monday night in downtown Cincinnati, and we welcome you to Great American Ballpark. Game one, first of three between division rivals. The red-hot St. Louis Cardinals come to town to take on the Cincinnati Reds. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Day, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds baseball. And, well, starting tonight, every night is going to be inside the National League Central where, Chris, you have three teams, and the Reds will play them all the rest of this season that are very much fighting for a spot in the playoffs. Well, you're right about that. So those games matter to those teams very much. The Cardinals on a roll right now, but the Reds have seven games left with them, four in this series, and then three on the road. The Pirates... Games mean very much to them, too, as do the Brewers, who have been really scuffling lately. Now, it also means a lot to the Reds. I mean, as far as being a player on a ball club, I've been on a player on a ball club in September where games didn't mean much to your own team in the standings, but it means something to you individually. And the pride that you have as a professional player to get out there and get after it, and I think that's what Brian Price wants to see out of his guys from here on out. And for a guy like Dylan Axelrod, who gets a ball tonight, it means even more, because who knows what changes may be in store for the Reds and their rotation, their entire staff in the offseason, and not bad at all so far in three starts for Dylan. Well, he's had a golden opportunity to pitch in the major leagues, and he probably did not think he was going to get this year. Acquired by the Reds during the All-Star break from the Chicago White Sox, they give him a few starts here. All of a sudden, he opens some eyes, and he says, hey, you know what? Maybe I've got a chance to make this rotation come next spring training if I continue to pitch the way he has so far. Home runs allowed have been a problem, especially the last time out against Baltimore, but they're a home run hitting team. If he's honest with his control tonight, he ought to be just fine against the Cardinals. And the man opposing him on the mound is hard throwing right-hander Shelby Miller. Well, Shelby Miller started the season off like a gangbuster. Six and two in his first nine games, throwing the ball by a lot of people, but not so much anymore. And the Reds this year have gotten him too. He's got control problems, and that's one thing the Reds hitters ought to know going up to it. Don't make don't make a mistake by being too aggressive early in the count, chasing pitches out of the zone and making yourself early outs. Make him establish the fact that he can throw strikes. All right, when we come back, you may have heard the 2015 red schedule is out. Jim Day will give you a preview of that when we return. You're watching Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio.
Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further. By Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. I would like to point something out. We do not hate our opponents for the next four games, but we do have particular disdain for this team. If you're headed to the game, it looks wonderful. 77, first pitch. Seventh inning, 73. Final out, 68. Hello, Yadier. Right up the middle. Enjoy the game, everyone, on Fox Sports Ohio. It's a very pleasant night here on the field. I'm Jim Day. Today, the 2015 schedule came out, and let's take a look at some of the highlights. The season will start a week later next year. Opening day in Cincinnati will be April 6th versus the Pirates. The first homestand will feature the Pirates and the Cardinals, and it will begin a 22-game stretch versus all National League Central Division opponents. Interleague play next year against the American League Central. The Tigers, Twins, Indians, and Royals will come to Cincinnati while the Reds will face the White Sox on the road. They'll go to Kansas City, Cleveland as usual, and a trip to Detroit. 28 of the final 34 games are against Central Division teams, so they'll open and close the season in the division. But the big highlight of 2015, July 14th, the All-Star Game finally back here in the Queen City, and we can't wait for that. But there's business at hand tonight. It's the first game with the Cardinals. The Reds trying to play a factor in the race in the National League Central. When the Cardinals come to town, they always want to play well. Lineups and first pitch are next on Fox Sports Ohio. Another night, isolated clouds here and there. Temperatures already dipping down into the 70s, expected to drop down into the 50s later tonight. And the Reds taking the field on this Monday night, the first of three here against Mike Matheny's division leading St. Louis Cardinals. They won eight of their last nine. And now a four and a half game lead inside the National League's Central Division. Let's take a look at his starting lineup tonight. Presented by Meyer. Carpenter at third, John Jay in center, Matt Holliday in left. Matt Adams, the first baseman and cleanup hitter. Johnny Peralta, shortstop. Yadier Molina catching. He's back again, healthy after the thumb surgery. And a ladder third of Oscar Tavares, Colton Wong, 
and Shelby Miller. Starting it for the Reds since being brought up from Louisville, making his four start a one and one record and a very fine ERA is Dylan Axelrod. He has impressed. There's no question about it. The Reds signed him but when they were able to trade him for an exchange for cash from the Chicago White Sox because they were worried about the health of their pitching staff. They're wondering if they needed somebody to come up from Triple A throw strikes keep the team in the ball game. They weren't sure they had what they needed down there. So they made this trade got a 28 year old right hander. He had six extensive exterior experience last year as a starter for the White Sox and he's going to get a chance here to pitch out the rest of the season and take a look at him in spring training drafted by the Padres back in the 30th round. He's bounced all over the place. He's played an independent ball. He's been up and down and he really relishes this opportunity to pitch in the major leagues and finally show what he thinks he's learned and which is how to pitch at this level. Well, Brian Price already going on record that he believes Alfredo Simon will be again part of the starting rotation looking ahead to next year. And there's very little doubt that if everybody indeed is brought back, there is no room in that rotation for anybody. If Simon's in there to go along with Bailey and Latos and Cueto and Leak, but those are big decisions the Reds have to make during the offseason. So Carpenter digging in, takes a fastball high, and this one underway. 275 batters, seven home runs, 55 batted in. Carpenter's had a good year. He's not had what he had a season ago, which was an extraordinary year. One and one. Carpenter was one of the best offensive players in the league last season and got a number of votes for the league's most valuable player award. Ball hit hard. But Heisey able to leap into the air and get it. He initially made a step in it looked like and was able to recover. Well, Matt Carpenter does this about as well as anybody, which hit the ball the other way. I think that ball took off a little bit more than Chris Heisey thought, but he was able to corral it. John Jay began the year in the backup spot to Peter Borges in center field, but played his way into a starting role and is playing his way into a starring role for the Cardinals. That batting average all the way up to 315. 39 batted in. And that job belongs to him. Should they reach the playoffs, he will be in that lineup. Barring facing maybe a guy like Clayton Kershaw, a left hander on the mound, maybe you get Borges a start, but outside of that, you got to believe Jay will be in there. One and two. Look at JJ. The Cardinals took off in the month of August. They were floundering around, much like the Reds, right around 500, a little bit above 500. Remember the Reds were the team that at the All-Star break was in second place, a game and a half behind front running Milwaukee. Well, basically, that's about the time the Cardinals righted the ship. And things unfortunately for the Reds went the other way. Well, they went 27 and 20 in August, and they've only lost once in September, and now all of a sudden. Something appears to be wrong with Dylan Axelrod. I mean, they called out Brian Price right away. You could see. Devin Mezzarocco turned to the home plate umpire Chris Guccione and say hold on here. We've got to go out and talk to him. Take a look at the last pitch that he threw and see if we can see anything here. Other than him taking his pitching thumb and kind of rubbing it around his belt. Maybe moving his arm a little bit. I we have no indication. Oh, that's Paul Lasar, the head trainer in the in the dugout, and Steve Bauman, the assistant trainer, on the mound with Axel Rodner. They're just going to walk him right off the mound. So after seven pitches, and this is fourth start since being brought up to the Reds Big League Club. Dylan Axelrod will walk off the mound here at Great American Ballpark. And the Reds are going to bring in left-hander David Holmberg from their bullpen. This will be our skyline chili call to the pen. We get any word on Mr. Ack?
clubhouse and if we get word from Rob Butcher the Reds director of media relations from the clubhouse as to Dylan's condition will certainly let you know what we do know is the Reds are going to bring on left hander David Holmberg from the bullpen. One of the 10 September call ups his third stint with the Reds this season was his first two appearances came as a starter and neither one of them went well at all. Now, Holmberg is still very young only 23 years old of course he was acquired in that three team trade that sent Ryan Hannigan to the Tampa Bay Rays. And he came from Arizona in part of that trade. So Holmberg pitched for the most part down in Triple A this year. He did have some arm problems early on that sent him back. Second round pick originally by the Chicago White Sox in 2009. Well, let's take a look at the Reds on defense tonight, presented by your Ford dealers. While Holmberg gets warmed up, Billy Hamilton will be flanked in the outfield by Heisey and Jay Bruce. Brian Payne over at first base, Frazier at third, middle infield of Cozart and Phillips, and Devin Mesoraco back behind the plate. And Devin going to come out and visit Holmberg on the mound, who didn't need very long to get ready. No, he didn't. Of course, he was in the bullpen, so he figured he had that reliever's state of mind. But I can tell you that it is one of the most uncomfortable things that you can possibly do, which is come into a ball game. For an, for an injured pitcher, you stand on the mat and you get all your warm up pitchers right there in front of everybody, including the opposition. I mean, they're watching your every move, they're seeing your breaking ball, they're trying to see something from you. So it is not an envious, enviable place to be. I can tell you that right now. And uh, he probably wanted to get that warm up over as quick as he can and get the live game action. Swing and a miss, and that is strike three, and that batter belongs to Holmberg. So one pitch and a strikeout for David. So two down here in the St. Louis first inning and that'll bring up the red hot Matt Holiday. They've waited a while for him to get hot. 81 runs batted in Holiday with 16 home runs. Had a couple of hits couple of RBIs yesterday three hits on Thursday. Named the National League's player of the week had four home runs and knocked in a whopping 13 runs. Got that one a bit off the end of the bat, and that'll land in the middle of Heisey. So a good start for David Holmberg. Chris has been talking about him going back to spring training, so we'll see what he has in store tonight.
first inning, and now Brian Price's starting lineup that he'll send up there starting here in the bottom of the inning. Brought to you by Meyer, Billy Hamilton, Brian Pena, Todd Frazier. Kevin Mezzarocco in a cleanup spot, Brandon Phillips and Jay Bruce to follow. And a latter third of Chris Heisey, Zach Kozak. And now David Holmberg. And on the mound for the Cardinals, an 8 9 record, an ERA right at four. See the walk, 71. That's most on their staff, as are his 20 home runs allowed, Shelby Miller. Now, Shelby Miller, former number one pick, 6'3, 195 pounds. He's only 23 years old. Cardinal signed him out of Brownsburg High School or Brownwood High School in Brownwood, Texas, a suburb of Houston. He had a really good run of it early in the year where he went six and two, had an earned run average under 2.8, but in his last 18 starts, he struggled mightily, especially to put wins on the board. He's only two and seven in his last 18 starts, and he struggled a little bit on the road. He'll come after the Reds tonight primarily with a fastball. He's throwing a little bit more two seam fastballs than he did early in the year. First time, first couple of times the Reds saw him, he was a high fastball pitcher with a big overhand curveball, but he's trying to get that ball down around the knees a little bit more now, and that requires a two seamer. Billy digging in looks at a fastball in the outside corner of strike. Hamilton at 264, 46 runs batted in. Showing button to breaking ball misses inside. Again this season, the Cardinals have dominated the Reds. Well, they're hoping by facing Miller will get him off on the right foot in this series. They've already handed him a pair of losses. This year. One ball and two strikes. And the Reds only have three wins in 12 games against the Cardinals so far this season. And that's a fastball on the outside corner, strike three. Uh, he's got a live arm. There's no question about that. Look at the late life that this fastball has, and Billy Hamilton thinks that ball is going to dart down and away, and it just has great carry on it. Pretty good spot right there on the knees, and Hamilton goes down looking. Brian Payne. Seen a lot of playing time this first season as a Cincinnati Red behind the plate, and of course, a lot of time ever since Joey Votto went down over at first base. Takes outside, one ball and one strike. Milwaukee will play later tonight at home against Miami. There you get a look at Joey Votto, and there have been stories the last couple of days. Suggesting there might be a chance, Mr. Welsh, that we will see Joey Votto before the end of this year. Now, he said, look, if I am able to play even the final inning of the final game, then I'll do it. Well, that's the kind of attitude you want. I did not see him down on the field working out with the team today. Oh, they'll handle the routine fly ball. Two away. That, that does not mean he's not out here early before anybody gets to the ballpark. Doing some baseball stuff, but I would imagine that Joey feels like you know he's been out for so long that why rush it back right now? I think what his attitude has been is that I'll come back when I'm healthy and able to play, and only he can determine that. Of course, a man has grown to be very close with Joey Votto is our very own Jim Day, and I think it'd be a good chance to check in with him right about now as Adams. In pursuit of that foul ball, can't get there in time. How about it, Jim? He took some ground balls today before the Reds took batting practice. He took them uh, while the Reds were stretching out, and I got to tell you, he passed the eye test last time that he took ground balls. We were on the road, and they shut him down because he felt tremendous amount of discomfort in that leg. And just again, going by the eye test today, he looked much, much more comfortable today. I got to tell you, I was sharing a uh, story with Chris before the ball game. Uh, fellow I worked with in the NFL was a all pro offensive lineman 
played more than a dozen years in the NFL just retired last year named David Deal played for the New York Giants. And of course as a football player I mean the, the, the number of injuries you have especially as a lineman are just incredible. Year after year after year and he told me by far and away the most excruciating pain he has ever been through in his life were those plasma injections where they take blood out tumble it around try to enrich it and so forth and shoot it back into your bloodstream and Votto has already been through what three of those Jim so far or is it last check was it two is it now three I believe it's two and okay. I can uh, tell you firsthand that when he had the last one done he was having trouble discomfort just going down the steps yep. so you could tell he was in a lot of pain afterwards and they basically shut it shut whoever takes those PRP injections down for a week or more where you do nothing. Yeah, I mean, I was stunned when uh, David Deal was sharing that story with me. He said, in fact, uh, there was a male nurse sitting there, and, and the nurse looked at him beforehand and said, hey, look, you might want to grab a hold of my arm here before we give you this injection. And, you know, for a guy 6'7", 320 pounds, he looks at the guy and says, you got to be kidding me. I've been getting my brains beat in for a decade. The guy says, all right, well, you have it your way. And the next thing you know, they put that needle in there and, Said he's never felt anything like it and is thankful he's never had to go through another one of those again. But they work. They work for David Deal, right? Isn't that what he said? They had him ready to go for a game less than two weeks later. His injury, from what I understand, Abato's injury, and I don't know a ton about it, but it sounds like his is, is obviously much more severe than the one Deal had to require one injection. As Frazier pops it up. And a shallow right field. Tabera's there, and the inning is over. Reds are gone against Miller in order. No score at the end of one. For your Reds questions on the game day live page. What makes Christopher Negron such a valuable asset? And the Ohio State University marching band pays tribute to the Simpsons during a halftime performance. Check it all out at FoxSportsOhio.com. And yes, indeed, Jeff Pecoro is already fired up. Tomorrow, the first segment of Reds Live, right around 6:30. He will be able to officially give me my pie to the face after his University of Kentucky Wildcats covered the point spread. I understand Tom that there were two pies. One was a green pie representing the colors of the Ohio Buckeye or Ohio Bobcats and the blue pie of course from the big blue of Kentucky. Really sounds like you're getting the blue pie. All right fair enough. Looking forward to it. Popped up. Behind the second base bag. 
And Cozart out to get it. One away. You know, uh, congratulations are in order for you and your teammates, four of them today. Jim Volpenheim, captain and general manager at Shepard, right? Lance Lucas. And why am I drawing and a blank? Dave Mackey. Uh, and Dave Mackey, of course. Winners out at Belterra of the Marty Brenneman Golf Classic today. That would be your third team title, if I'm not mistaken. Well, in many years, but in the last few years, we were trending the wrong way, and I know that you as the owner got, uh, you sent out the word. And Eddie Shepard realized, you know, a guy in his last year of a contract, he was motivated. And boy, he motivated that team today. He did a great job. Well, all of you were on the last year of a contract. He wasn't the only one. He just happens to be the general manager, so it became far more public. But I'm here the first to, uh, to let you and let the rest of the teammates know that because of your spectacular work today, all of you have been awarded two year contract extension so congratulations if you'll accept it of course there's a fly ball to center and that'll be the second out of the inning I'd like to think you'll be coming back next year well is that uh, guaranteed money and, and, and if we yes. don't it, it, will there be a buyout at the end of that there will be no buyout at the end no. <laughs> but it is guaranteed for two years good enough for me and I'm sure that are good enough for Mr. Shepard too because he's he's earned it he was relieved to see those punts drop. Of course, he made about half of them anyway. Well, they earned it. All of you earned it. So congratulations. I'm very proud of you. I'm just a little surprised that uh, I've not received a, uh, you know, congratulatory phone call from uh, the host of the tournament. Well, you know, I got to tell you that Charlie Frank and everybody involved down there with that, the Marty Brenneman Golf Classic did an outstanding job. The program last night at Belterra was terrific. Comedians were great. I mean, it was just a great weekend of uh, fun and all for a very good cause, the Reds Community Fund. So thank all of you who made it a part of your weekend and early part of the week as well. A lot of money raised for the Reds Community Fund. Thank you, and thank you to Marty Brennan. Action time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Ohio fan photo. Perhaps we'll show it during an upcoming telecast. It's brought to you by AT&T. Look at the Cardinals on defense presented by your Ford dealers. Holiday J. Tavares left center and right. Carpenter Peralta on the left side of the infield. Colton Wong and Matt Adams on the right side. Molina healthy again. And Miller on the mound. Boy, it's extraordinary how young this Cardinal team is when you look at that lineup on the field. You basically got a first full year player at first. You have a first year player at second base. You have a young third baseman. And you have a rookie out in right field. 
And Shelby Miller's in what, his third year in the big league? Well, you're right, and a lot of it has come right from within that Cardinal farm system that has been very prolific the last few years. You know, Shelby Miller on the mound tonight, a draft pick of 2009, and he's surrounded by guys really that came through that same draft. Overall, it was a very good draft for Major League Baseball. But Miller was a first round pick there. Matt Carpenter came in that draft. Matt Adams, the first baseman in that same draft. Mazzarocco leading off the red second inning, and that's into the mid of John Jay. Take, take a look at the uh, at those players that are on both teams from that 2009 draft. Remember, that was the draft that Steven Strasburg was taken number one overall. The Reds picked Mike Leake. They got Billy Hamilton, Tucker Barnhart, three players that are on the big league roster now. The Cardinals have four on that roster. It just happens to be the three of them are on the on the field right now with Shelby Miller getting to start tonight. I mean, when you can have three players from one draft, just five years removed on your big league roster, that's a very good draft because sometimes a team will go through an entire year and really just strike out, just have some bad luck, have some injuries, maybe make some bad scouting decisions. That'll be the first base runner for either team tonight. A one out single by Brandon Phillips. Well, not only now play three players, Chris, on your roster, but in the Cardinals case here tonight, to have three of them in your starting lineup. Yeah. And there were a few others from the Cardinals. I think Joe Kelly was also in that draft. Of course, he's been traded from the Cardinals to the Boston Red Sox. Brad Boxberger was also taken in that draft by the Reds, and he's been traded a couple of times, once to the Padres, and now he's with the Tampa Bay Rays. That was the Reds, I believe, second round pick out of the University of Southern California. So now Jay Bruce, he's down a strike. Ball just low and away. And a ball and a strike on Jay. 16 home runs, 60 batted in, a 216 batting average for Jay Bruce. It's a fastball right down the middle to get ahead at one and two for Miller. Here you're talking about Brad Boxberger and you know, bouncing around a little bit. There's a ground ball for one, and that's an easy double play, and that'll end the red second inning. We'll talk more about that later. Well, another second round pick twirling him up there for the Reds. David Holmberg back on the mound when we come back.
on Fox Sports Ohio. I'm Jim Day. My pleasure to welcome in Scott Hartno. He's a member of the Columbus Blue Jackets getting ready for another NHL season up in Columbus and appreciate you joining us. First of all, I was expecting the big bushy hair like you had in Philadelphia. Is this just an off-season thing? I wanted to. Uh, summer's always nice to have short hair, uh, you know, especially with the hot weather. But uh, you know, I'm just excited to, to get to Columbus, get set up, and excited to be here today to watch, uh, watch the guys play. Before we get to hockey, let's talk about uh, baseball a little bit. How uh, I know in Saskatchewan, I understand you play some little league ball. Yeah, uh, played growing up, and uh, you know I, I don't think I was the best player around, but love to be able to you know outside on a nice sunny day and uh, you know play catch and uh, hit the ball around and. Um, always been a fan of it. Uh, you know, Philadelphia watched the Phillies play and yeah. uh, just always been a big fan. And you watch the Phillies play the Reds, I know, and uh, a game Reds fans would like to forget that series. Uh, I hate to say it, but it was a pretty good game. That first day, if you, if you like uh, Halliday, I liked him playing for the Blue Jays before he came to Philly, so uh, he was my boy. But um, no, it's just, it's just cool to be here at new ballparks. Uh, there's nothing better than having a, a cold beer and a hot dog and uh, just enjoying some nice weather and uh, a good ball game. No question about it. All right, you threw out the ceremonial first pitch. Uh, Looked pretty good. How'd you feel? Well, uh, to be honest, I wasn't too nervous until I actually went out in the mound. I looked uh, where I was throwing it. It looked like it was a good quarter mile that I was throwing it, but I was able to get it over the plate, and, uh, you know, I think if there was an umpire there, it would have been a for sure strike. You uh, met... Well, we have one Canadian on this team, that being Joey Votto. You guys were able to talk uh, before the game. How'd that go? Well, like good Canadian boy obviously yeah. is and uh, obviously watch his career there's uh, not too many of them in the in the major leagues and uh, really really nice gentleman and uh, you know obviously offered uh, him or some of the guys want to come uh, down to Columbus and and watch a game and and you know he goes back to uh, Toronto for some time in the summer so uh, obviously we play the Maple Leafs too so hopefully uh, uh, be able to hook up with him and uh, just an honor to meet uh, all the guys here especially Joey yeah before it was a uh, treat to go to Toronto with now the Blue Jackets now in the Eastern Conference so uh, play them a lot more. Let's talk about the hockey team. Now, I remember when I was covering hockey, you were with the team that in Columbus they called Darth Vader. You were with the Nashville Predators, and that didn't go so well back in the day. But how do you think you're going to endear yourself to Blue Jacket fans? Well, like you said, I played Nashville. I played a, a lot of games against the Blue Jackets, and uh, you know, even then it was a hard building to come in and play. Uh, even though maybe we did beat them more times than not, uh, we're in a Nashville jersey. But the last few years, uh, you know, obviously talk with my family when the trade was going going on um, talking to uh, you know other guys in the league other peers and said wow that's that's a great uh, you know addition to Columbus they were hard to play against now and and uh, be a little bit better that I got here and hopefully I can contribute be a leader uh, uh, win some hockey games that's what it's all about and and obviously win a Stanley Cup and we believe that we got a, a great young group of guys and uh, we're right there it's uh, definitely a different culture up there in Columbus, making the playoffs last year, and that always gets the fan base going, gets the team going, get the morale going. So guys looking forward to perhaps obviously making the playoffs going deeper. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, you know, watching that series last uh, last season against Pittsburgh, they were right there beside him, and, you know, the, the biggest thing that uh, made me want to come here, you know, I had to waive my no-move clause to come here. It was yeah. uh, talk with John Davidson, talk with Yarmo, uh, how disappointed they were and not satisfied of just making the playoffs, how they, they wanted to beat uh, Pittsburgh, and uh, when you hear that from the top people, uh, it just filters right down through the organization, and uh, that's something I want to be a part of. I want to win. That's, uh, that's the only thing I want to do is win. John Davidson, a good hockey man. There's no question about that. Season opener October 9th at Buffalo. And then the home opener October 11th versus the Rangers. you got to be looking forward to that because that means training camp is over because uh, you're the back end of the career and I imagine training camp isn't fun anymore. No, it's it's uh, this is probably the least fun part of the year for me the, the two weeks leading up to training camp when you get there your your business your own business this is a, a tough time but you know excited to play the Rangers obviously being in Philly you got a lot of rivalries you know against Pittsburgh against the Rangers and you know I'm lo um, looking forward to just bringing my my attitude my hard work my uh, you know passion for the game in that dressing room and and uh, you know show the young guys that it's uh, you know, we're here to win. All-Star game. It's going to be an Ohio flair in two of the major sports. Cincinnati looking forward to the 2015 All-Star game. In Columbus, the All-Star game was supposed to be there a few years back, but the lockout uh, didn't enable that to happen. But it's going to be there. There's got to be a lot of excitement in CBUS for the All-Star game. No, it's, it's cool. I think it's uh, the passion the fans uh, show out there and, uh, to bring the, you know, one of the coolest where every best player over the whole league gets to come to Columbus, showcase their talents, and, you know, it's a well-deserving town, I think, for it, and I'm sure they'll put on a great show. 
I know they had some uh, Hartnell wigs in Philadelphia because of that hair. Can we expect the long hair coming up in the season? That's the pertinent question right here. Well, the one, one guy that I do remember playing against uh, the Blue Jackets was my Commodore, and he'd always yeah. cut, her, oh, yeah. <laughs> cut her short and just let the, the orange uh, curly hair go. And he cut it short and then leave it go the rest of the way. Uh, so I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do this year, just kind of just how I feel, but I'm sure, uh, you know, in the five years I got left, I'm sure uh, the long hair will come out one of the times. So. We're looking forward to it. Appreciate you joining us. Lots of luck this season. That's great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. That is Scott Hartnell. Going to add a lot of veteran presence to the Blue Jackets this season and uh, going to go back to the playoffs. Tom? And I know Jim, you'll uh, be right there following them every step of the way. One and oh to Matt Carpenter. They had the single first base runner of the game. By Colton Wong, little flare into left field. They bunt him to second base. So now the first scoring chance for either team thus far. A runner in scoring position with two out. Carpenter lined out hard to Heisey and left, leading off the game. And it's in there a strike. One and one on Matt Carpenter. And Holmberg to the plate, and the breaking ball sweeps away. Bounces up there to the left-handed batting Carpenter and his three balls and a strike left-handed batting John Jay waits on deck. Now one thing that Matt Carpenter will make you do is throw the ball over the plate. He's just not the kind of guy that comes out and is over anxious. He will the runner at second base. As for David Holmberg, you know you get down and a count three and one. There's no reason why you have to groove one right here. You know you throw the best pitch that you can on the corner that you think you're going to get an out. If you miss miss out of the zone you've got first base wide open and you got another left handed batter coming up who has certainly struggled more against left handers than this left handed batter. Well he got a pitch to hit and he hooks and foul three and two on carpet. Remember last year the Cardinals had one of the great seasons in the history of baseball batting with runners in scoring position this year they were brutal that is up until about 10 days ago they were batting 241 with runners in scoring position well ever since the final days of August they are hitting 400 with runners in scoring position and they've won eight of those nine games since that streak began. Three and two now on Carpenter. Challenged him to Holmberg. Knocked down by Pena, and they get the out at first. That's a nice job by Holmberg and by Pena. Coming right after Carpenter. Still no score.
Morgan Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries, call 1-800-ELK-OHIO, and it is the central race of the National League. Before, before the Cardinals went on that 8-1 run, you can see that they were in second place a game and a half behind the Milwaukee Brewers. Then Milwaukee went right into the tank. And St. Louis took over. Now the split between St. Louis and Milwaukee is five full games. Pittsburgh has come in to take in second place four and a half games back. And that is all due to how well the Brewers or how well the Cardinals have played and how poorly the Brewers have played. All right, Chris, I asked you this a while back, but now seemingly things have, have literally been flipped almost completely upside down in such a short amount of time. With the kind of lead the Cardinals have and the way they're playing right now, you never say, okay, they're going to win the division. But they certainly look like the team to beat. There's very well, little doubt about that. They put themselves in that position. Yes. They've gone out and earned it. Do you think for another year we're going to have... There's a fly ball in the left field. And that one caught at the warning track. Of course, last year you had the Reds and the Pirates that played in the one-game playoff. Do you believe we have another National League Central Division team that plays in the one-game playoff, if not two? How hard to predict that right now. I mean, right now it looks like that could be the case. Uh, it looks like that the first wild card team right now is the San Francisco Giants, and they're in pretty good shape right there. I think last time I saw that they were something like four or five games. Three and a half. Three and a half now in, in front of the next team in there, which would be the Pittsburgh Pirates. So, yeah, I mean, it certainly is conceivable. Certainly very interesting for those. And the Reds would have something to do, perhaps, as to whether they would or not with all the games that are in the division remaining for the Reds. There's the wild card in the National League. And now. I guess what I was getting to you, know, to you was, you know, you look at the Pirates, you look at Atlanta, you look at Milwaukee. Do any of those three teams stand out to you? Any one of the three? No. I mean, I think they're all pretty well evenly matched, although I am very surprised that the Milwaukee Brewers went into such a, a deep slide. And sometimes when a team gets that out of the way and you've got a month of baseball left or nearly a month of baseball left, you get your act together again and you, and you pick it up and then you can start playing the way you did earlier in the year. Now, whether the Brewers can do that or not, I don't know. But I think they're all pretty, pretty even teams from what I've seen. Well, you mentioned the Brewers will be at home. They'll start in about 15 minutes from now. Opening game of a series against the Marlins from Miami. Pirates are scoreless in the bottom of the third at Philadelphia. Now, what about you? Any of those teams seem like they're going to run away with it? No, because um, I'm with you, having seen all of them a number of times this year. Although I will say... Of those three teams, to me, the Pirates play with more of an edge about them than the other two. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't see the Braves a ton. Because that one's off the end of the bat, a fly ball into left field. But I don't know. It just strikes me. The Pirates strike me as a team. And, you know, they were sort of like a lot of other clubs, 500, few games under. Got on a nice run to put themselves in the position that they're in now. I really like their I like their manager the edge he brings to the team every single day finding a way to challenge different players in different situations we'll see how it plays out it may not mean anything and like you the Reds will definitely have something to say about whether or not they will get in you know you look for motivation any way you can get it. yeah I mean if you're not playing a team that's in in the race, you know, you look for motivation, maybe selfish motivation. It's a salary drive for you to finish up the year strong, show some pride. But if you're playing a team on the other side of the field that has something to to gain if they win, it gives you a little bit of an extra edge to play, even if you're a, a team that is 10 or 11 games back. And that's where, unfortunately, where the Reds are right now, but it should give these guys a reason to play good, solid, hard-nosed baseball. And I think if nothing else, that's what Brian Price is looking for. This is a second career at bat for Holmberg. It didn't last long. He's out on strikes. We go to the fourth. Scoreless. Red to the cut.
Ohio, brought to you by JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together by Toyota. For over 30 Toyota offers, visit buyatoyota.com. And go for the sing-on wing Tuesdays at B-Dubs with specially priced wings all day. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. Look at that shot. Well, that is a beautiful picture. Looking from the Commonwealth right into downtown Cincinnati. Congratulations to the Bengals. They got off to a big start yesterday. Yes, boy, did. what a huge win that was. It was a nail biter for a while, but boy, that's a great win to start, especially given the fact that the Ravens were so so good in the month of September at home over the last few years. And a tough place for the Bengals to play over the last few years. That's a tough place for everybody to play. Ravens been winning a lot of games, especially at that stadium, and uh, getting the season opener inside your division on the road. Well done. Part of the order here for the Cardinals in the fourth inning. Holmberg took over for Dylan Axelrod, if you're just joining us. And by the way, Axelrod, where it is from the clubhouse, strained his right oblique. So hopefully it's not a severe strain of the oblique, but that's the kind of injury based on others that have had something like it that takes a little while to get better. That one scalded in the center field, a base hit by John Jay. The problem with an oblique injury, that's when you pull a muscle in your side around your rib cage, and it's worse if it's down or behind your, like in your back area. Uh, every time you turn, you just can't do a thing. I mean, you essentially have to shut it down because every time you turn, it hurts. Every time you cough or sneeze, you might get yourself right back to start your starting point. This can be very aggravating. And they're more and more common in baseball, I think, than I've ever seen before. Why do you think that is? I don't Any know. Guess? I think maybe guys are just pushing the weights and that connect part of the conditioning to the limit. You know, back in your day, Chris, uh, there weren't many guys pumping the iron like they do now. I mean, these guys are physical specimens, many of them in baseball today. Do you think maybe some of that weight work is detrimental? I can't really comment on whether it's detrimental or not, Tom. Uh, all you can go by, though, is the results of the rash of injury. Just take the number of Tommy John surgeries that have been performed over the last few years. Well, yes, there are. As a radar gun showing the guys are throwing harder, yes. Is there a reason why? Yeah, you probably have to be stronger to do that. You can work out to get stronger. But at some point, your body telling you maybe that's enough. There's always going to be a quest and let's just take pitchers for instance There's always going to be a quest for pitchers that throw harder rather than softer because they're harder to hit and if you begin that training as a younger player you're getting stronger you know the rash of Tommy John injuries even amongst college and high school even earlier than that kids have, have skyrocketed in the last few years and a lot of that has to do with weight training. That's good pitch right there on the fastball knee high on the inside corner strikeout number two for Homer. Yeah to a guy like Matt Holliday who's really seeing the ball well. I like the fact that he'll he's willing to come inside to a guy like Matt Holliday with this fastball because if you only pitch to one part of the plate. They'll figure that out and it'll be very difficult to get hitters out. Got to move it around a little bit. And sometimes softer throwing left handers like Holmberg are reluctant to go inside. But you've got to do it. I say softer throwing only because his fastball is around 88 or 89 instead of 95. Holmberg in each of his first two starts, his only two starts, wearing a red uniform this year. Neither one of them. 
lasted very long. In fact, each of them lasted exactly two and two thirds innings. So already tonight, he has bypassed. That mark, he's recorded officially three innings of work now, working in relief of the injured Dylan Axelrod. One and oh on Matt Adams, runner at first. One out, scoreless game. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Fastball up and in, quick throw, and diving back to the bag safely is Jay. Two oh pitch on Adams. Again, the fastball inside, not afraid to come right in there. You know, the Cardinals really are not a stealing ball club. I mean, you want to throw over every once in a while to keep them honest, but they're not a team that has very many stolen bases at all. In fact, their number one stolen base guy is their number eight hitter, Colton Wong, who has 20 of them. Nobody else is in even double digits. And that is something the Cardinals were not counting on when this year began. We told you earlier they had. Peter Borges playing center field, a guy capable of stealing a ton of bases if he can get on. And they also had Colton Wong batting up closer to the top of the order. You may remember he began the year hitting in the two hole. And they were hoping both of those guys would give them at least a more dynamic offense. There's ball four up and into Adams. There are two on with one out. Play for a chance to win $5.6 million with MLB.com's easy and free game, Beat the Streak. You pick players to get hits in 57 straight games, you could become a millionaire. Play MLB.com, Beat the Streak today. My son, Luke, is dialed into that game. I mean, looking over all the numbers. Before he's getting ready for school, figuring out who he's going to pick that night. I hear he's a pretty good numbers guy anyway. Not bad. He's nice not thing. bad at all. Could we maybe have somebody in the Brenneman household who's not afraid to do math in public? Well, his mother is very good at it. And that's where his math skills and his sister's math skills, <laughs> thankfully, praise the Lord, the kids were able to find those skills from mom. Or else they'd be in a world of hurt. Uh, now with a couple of runners on base, uh, Mezzarocco's out there, and you can even see the body language right there. You're flying open a little bit, wants you to get the ball down. You know, don't overthrow just because you've got a couple of guys on base right here. And the guy at the plate is very dangerous. Johnny Peralta, 20 home runs. That is a franchise record in St. Louis for shortstops. Count on Johnny Peralta. And he took a little off there and got a strike. Good pitch. Actually, when you throw that pitch, you wanted Peralta to swing at that, not take that pitch. One ball and one strike. And a fastball is off the inside corner. The strike zone there, and now Holmberg pitching himself into some trouble. Three and one, as Chris mentioned, to a very dangerous hitter in Johnny Peralta. Peralta just picked up his career number 1,500th base hit over the weekend. 
He is one of only 600 players in the history of the game to reach that number of base hits in a career. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, where is that in relation to the total number of players that have played? Over 17,000 players have played in Major League Baseball history. And he is one of 600 to get to 1,500 or more hits. That's pretty good. I mean, chase ball four right there. And did Holmberg a favor. So now Holmberg still looking for a ball maybe down to get a, a ground ball out of Peralta. Double play gets him out of the inning. Runners go and it is ball four. Threw him a breaking ball on a 3-2 pitch to load him up. Yeah, that looked like a pretty good pitch right there. We'll take another look at the pitch and see where it ended up. Maybe they just called it high. Uh, it was inside. It's one of those situations where you know the runners are going at the time the catcher kind of jumps up in order to be able to get himself in a position to throw the runner out and sometimes screens the umpire out a little bit. But that ball turned out to be inside and Jeff Pico now out to try to settle him down here with the bases loaded. Strike as they're loaded for Yadier Molina. And he began with a base hit. Holmberg struck out Holiday, but has walked Adams and Peralta to load the bases in this scoreless game. Molina grounded out to Brandon Phillips his first time up, and boy, would Holmberg like another one of those right here and right now. And single to begin the inning was off the bat of Jay, and he's walked all the way to the third after free passes to Adams and Peralta. Two and one. Big time numbers for Molina in this ballpark against the Reds. Well, he took a hack at that one and feels like he had a pitch that was just a hair late on. You know, is there any coincidence that the Cardinals began to play a whole lot better once they got Molina back? No. I mean, you get your star players back and you get them back healthy. Just goes to show you how important they are. And that is strike three called and Molina knew it. Boy, what a time to get Molina. Well, the base is loaded and one out, and now one more out to go. A little slider that goes all the way across the plate. Starts outside, ends up inside. Molina may have read that as a big breaking ball that was going to break a little bit more. Well, now the rookie. Tavares being grounded out to Zach Cozart his first time up. Cardinals have him loaded. And it's ball one high. See already seven trips to the plate for this rookie right fielder. One hit in those seven at bats with the bases loaded. Two and oh. location on that 2-0 fastball catching the outside edge. 
You know, the other thing these Cardinals are playing for, not only to try to win their division, as you look at the location of this pitch, right on the nose, well, Fox track says slightly off the corner, but called a strike by Chris Guccione. Oh, boy. Three and one. Well, the Cardinals are only two games behind the Dodgers for the best record in the National League. And they are far better at home than they are on the road. Cardinals this season are under 500 away from Bush Stadium. 3 1 pitch. Popped up. Frazier in foul ground. Holmberg pitches in and then out of trouble. Well done. Chris Welsh was talking earlier. Something about this young man he likes. That is coming up on Thursday. We'll have Military Appreciation Day here at the ballpark. Presented by GovX.com. You can take advantage of the Military Appreciation Day ticket package. And see the Reds and the Cardinals for as low as $15. And receive an exclusive Reds Challenge coin. Plus, with every ticket package purchase, the Reds will donate $2 to the USO to support our troops. How about that? That'll be a 12:35 start on Thursday. Four-game series here. Reds still have the Cardinals for three more on the road. That will be a week from Friday. Reds are set to embark on their final road trip of the year, starting this weekend. Milwaukee, Chicago, and on to St. Louis. Reds will wrap up the regular season here against the Brewers and the Pirates. No score. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning, and Billy Hamilton a little bouncer down to Adams, and that's an easy play for out number one. Well, for Red fan, or for Red, it's a home run off that Toyota side of the night. A Reds fan. In tonight's case, Daryl Hurt. Will win this beautiful new tundra on display at Great American Ballpark. Daryl from Corinth, Kentucky. You can register for your chance to win. Just stop by an upcoming game or visit your Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky dealer. Now, did I say that town correctly or was I wrong there? I think that you pronounce it Corinth. Okay, thank you. Corinth. I beg your pardon. You know, you pass that right on I 75 on your way to Lexington. Really? Yeah. That big water tower got a big blue water tower right along the highway. Well, I made that drive many, many times. I, uh, but I failed to know the correct pronunciation. So Corinth, Kentucky. Thank you. Well, those in the Commonwealth can help 
Jeff Pecoro getting me back for the wager I made against their beloved Wildcats over the weekend with that blue pie tomorrow. So in Corinth, maybe they'll enjoy that. Give them just one more reason to tune in to Fox, Ohio. I wish they'd just play that song during the hold at bat. Well, even if you're not a huge Sinatra fan, how do you not love just listening to that guy sing? You're right. Man, what a voice. And Frazier a roller to Peralta. And Shelby Miller working on a one hitter. And the four, no score. shares his thoughts on Joey Votto. Get to know one of the new faces in the Reds dugout and get introduced to the voice of Great American Ballpark. All that and more on brand new Reds Weekly Wednesday at 6 right here on Fox Sports Ohio. And what a moon there is over Great American Ballpark tonight. Zach Cozart, well he's going to see a lot of moon rises because take a look at the picture. Young Cooper Cozart sleeping with daddy. Now Zach Cozart and the teammates rip him all the time for this. This guy can sleep with the best of them. He said that he is used to getting at least 10 hours of sleep a night. But since he's had his son. Well that's change as everyone knows. He says he gets about three hours sleep. And Cooper wakes up and all of a sudden. He's surprised if even himself that he springs to life and has no problem getting up and feeding the youngster. In fact, he says he's getting about six hours of sleep night, a night now, and suddenly he says he has more energy. So I think Cooper has proved he's been getting too much sleep, if you can believe that, Tom. Well, I, I got to tell you, A, Cooper obviously is a very, very good sleeper, so good for mom and dad. But 10 hours of sleep a night. I can't remember those I, days. I, I mean, it's such a no kidding. Now, ball players have, you know, they've got a reputation for being late sleepers. You play a game at night, may go out after the game, have something to eat, late when you get to bed, and late when you get up. You know, you roll out of bed, get a little grab something, and you head to the ballpark. Ten hours, that's, I can't remember what that's like. Now I, I tell you who has maintained that through his playing career and now his broadcasting career as a cowboy. <laughs> You're right. He is the only guy I know that, that's a guy of our relative mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I mean in any walk of life. I'm not talking about people who are involved in a in a traveling with a major league baseball team or people that are accountants or people that are uh, custodians or whatever it is that you do for a living. I don't know anyone of sort of our generation that gets the amount of sleep on a nightly basis during the course of a baseball season than does Jeff Brantley. Well, you know, he lives down there in Mississippi. Zach Cozart lives down there in Mississippi. Oh. Maybe there's something to that. That's a very interesting observation. Swing and a miss. Now, the Cowboy is not getting that kind of sleep when he's at home. Right. Because he's got youngins running around that have to get up for school every day. But I'm going to tell you what now. When it comes to getting on the road during the baseball season, the big fella is getting some serious. Now I got to tell you though, sometimes on the road, you know, we well, we get up, and play golf early in the morning, and we sometimes meet down the lobby at 6:30 a.m. He's rarely, if ever, late. Oh no, he's not going to be late. But he will we'll get back and get that power nap in. And don't call him late for dinner. He takes dinner to bed with him. He does. From time to time, and and he'll be the first to admit it, especially when it comes to. You know, maybe a, a late night dessert. He has been known from time to time to fall asleep with a big old cup of ice cream right on the boiler, which becomes ice cream soup. That's right. <laughs> and he's, he tells stories all the time about how to wake up in the middle of the night and all of a sudden there's like green stuff all over the bed. And he's wondering, well, what is it? Well, that was that mint chocolate chip. Who's in charge of the laundry over there at the Brantley household anyway? Well, he's got to be no <laughs> doubt about it during the uh, during the season. I don't know what happens when, when he gets down to Mississippi. Off the glove of Pena. And that'll go, I would imagine, as a base hit. We'll see. He had a dive to his right. And it is a hit for Matt Carpenter. That's his first hit in three at-bats. Hit very sharply by Carpenter. He had one early in the ball game. Back he led the game over the line drive to the left fielder. This time he hits it hard to Pena, tries to backhand it, and with two outs, the Cardinals reach a base runner. Holmberg has had one, one, two, three inning. That was the second inning of this game. He was part of the first one, two, three inning in the first. For those of you just joining us, Dylan Axelrod left with a strained oblique. After retiring the first batter of the game, then he was pitching to this guy, John Jay, when he threw a pitch and had to walk off the mound. And if you look at his left side, I mean his right side, and look at the right arm, just sort of the way he has a slight dip and favors and leaning slightly that way. There's a tapper to the right side. I tell you what, Holmberg's done a nice job tonight. Really nice job. Four and two thirds innings. So Chris Welsh might be right about this guy after all.
offer you a great value. They do it every year. It's called the Kroger Meal Deal, and you're not going to beat it. Just check on concession stands around the ballpark. The Kroger Meal Deal, it includes a hot dog, a bag of chips. You get a 16-ounce token during this homestand, Nature Valley Bars. Nature at its most delicious. And you get all that for $9. Make sure you get your Kroger Meal Deal next time you're at the ballpark. Reds come to bat here in the last of the fifth inning. No score. No runs, three hits, five left on base. Cardinals had him loaded with one out against Holmberg in the fourth inning. Holmberg got a big strikeout of Yadier Molina. And that one is ripped into left center field and will go to the wall. So be an extra base hit. And the first time the Reds have moved a runner to second base in a game tonight. Well, it's almost like Devin Mezzarocco was sitting back and waiting for a first pitch breaking ball. And he got one right there as Shelby Miller kind of hung it waist high. And Devin Mezzarocco, who's been swinging a hot bat, gets it going here with a leadoff double. Showing bunt and takes high for ball one. Shows bunt again, pulls the bat away, and a breaking ball this time a strike. Phillips and Miller delivers and Brandon a tapper to the left side. This is not going to advance a runner at the very minimum to third. One out in the inning. And now you're looking for a hit. Rather than perhaps just a ground out or a fly ball, Jay Bruce bounced into a double play. His only time up tonight started on a ground ball to the second baseman. You can see Shelby Miller rushes it up there now, 95 miles per hour with his fastball. His control has been very good tonight. Well, tonight it has been, but normally it has not been. Well, we brought up before the game started, he's issued more walks than any Cardinal pitcher this year. That one's in the air down the left field line and a long run for Holiday. The Reds had a runner at second with nobody out, and he is now standing there with two outs in the inning. A lot of that has to do, Tom, with doing little things. I mean, we we say that, and it's such a tired phrase, you know, do the little things, you win big ball games. But man, getting a runner over to third base with nobody out, when your team is struggling offensively, just opens up a lot of opportunities. It changes the way a pitcher goes about the at bat to the next guy. Chris Isaac had a pretty good swing at him last time. He got a ball a little bit on the end of the bat. It ended up flying out the left field, but still swinging the bat much better now, especially off the bench. And this one has popped up. So a leadoff double left out there in Wasteland.
to stop by there and watch the Reds and the Brewers game this Friday. Fox Sports Ohio girl Christine will be there and you can try your luck with the home run derby challenge. That'll be this Friday at 730 at Quaker State and Lou. That's out in Milford. That's right off 275 and the um, Route 50 exit. They've got a number of other attractions around down there, including a Buffalo Wild Wings. There's some other spots down there. You can't miss it right off 275 East. How about these numbers from David Holmberg tonight? Uh, what a turnaround from the t a couple of times that he's had the ball on the mound earlier on this year. Comes in as an emergency starter, and it's always tough to do that. I mentioned that when he was warming up on the field. But he warmed up pretty quickly like a reliever, and he went right to business. Struck out John Jay in the first pitch that he threw. Retired Matt Holliday for a 1 2 3 first. Had a 1 2 3 second. Worked out of a jam, and he's going to have to work out of another jam. But you had made the comment, you know, when he first came into the game, you know, you said, I have a feeling about Holmberg here tonight. What did you mean by that? That's a feeling that if he can get his breaking stuff work, and I mean he can pinpoint that changeup, he's going to get a lot of ground balls, and that ground ball by Holiday finds a hole. But I think he's the type of pitcher that you have to see for a long period of time before you make a decision on it, because his stuff isn't going to light you up. He does not a radar gun scout's dream by any means, so you have to watch him a long time before you make a decision. It's ahead 0 and 2. And Chris, it makes you wonder now, we didn't see David Holmberg pitch, you know, when he was a teenager. And you mentioned how young he still is, and he is really young. 23. And he just turned 23. And you, know, you got to believe the Chicago White Sox, when they were scouting him, probably, uh, you know, watched him so many times, and, and, and he would grow on you the more and more you watched him. And maybe the Diamondbacks felt the same way when they made the trade to, to acquire him before coming eventually in the deal to the Reds. Well, he was the second round draft pick. Yep. Of that same draft that we talked about with Mike Leake and Shelby Miller and Steven Strasburg. So there was a lot of talent in that draft, and you're right. Somebody more than just one scout down in Florida that saw him pitch down in Port Charlotte thought he was good because you sent cross checkers down there. You sent a lot of people to to take a look at somebody who's going to be a second round pick. Nice breaking ball right there gets a strikeout out of Matt Adams. So anytime a guy comes up like Holmberg and he gets knocked around a little bit, you, know, you don't want to rush to, to judgment because he is only 23. If he'd gone to college, he probably wouldn't be in the big leagues right now. He'd only be one year or two in, in the minor leagues. It'll you know, sign out of there until probably 21 years old. And depending on the severity of that injury to Dylan Axelrod, he may get another chance to get on the mound as a starter. That ball hit very hard into left field, and Heisey makes a really nice play. Boy, that ball stung off the bat of Johnny Peralta. Had a lot of top spin on it. And I mean, Heisey went and got it right now. Well done by Heisey. He goes back on the ball very well, Heisey. Does. Very athletic guy. Runs well. Got a beat on that. That's not an easy play at all. Not only sinking from the overspin, but also kind of hooking away from him. Certainly Holmberg appreciates that effort by Heisey. So now one more out to get. And this is a guy who arguably has been the biggest single out of the game for Holmberg tonight. And he's going to get him again. How about Holmberg? Chris Welsh said I have a feeling about this guy tonight. 
And I'll be doggone, he is right on the nose. for the start of every game with the Reds Live presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing right here on your exclusive home of Reds Baseball Fox Sports Ohio. Tomorrow Reds Live will begin at 630 so tune in for that and then it will be Mike Leak against Michael Waka. Waka making just his 17th start of the year had a lot of time on the DL. Very talented young right-hander. That guy is Mike Lee. In his last start, Walk only pitched three innings, coming back from that shoulder injury. So they're bringing him along slowly, hoping that he gets the full strength by the end of the regular season and into the Cardinal playoffs. No score last in the sixth inning, and the batter is Zach Cozart. That's off the end of the bat. A little pop up in the short left field. That's easy for Peralta. One pitch and one out. We're going to get a pinch hitter now for David Holmberg, who threw the ball brilliantly here tonight. And high fives, you better believe he earned those here in this one. Well, what an outstanding effort. That's got to make him feel so good, too. I mean, you feel like you're just a forgotten guy. You go out, you have a couple of starts, you get beat around, and you know you're a better pitcher than what those two starts earlier did. I mean, five innings, 12 hits, 11 runs, home runs, balls hit all over the place, and you're thinking to yourself, I just need to get the ball again. I, I need to show these guys that I can pitch. And he had a chance tonight, and he sees that opportunity. He did a nice job. All those numbers five and two thirds he walked a couple they came in back to back batters in the fourth inning when he loaded the bases and in single it started that inning. But he struck out Yadier Molina looking and then got. Tavares on a pop up and foul ground to Frazier. So in a day and age when a lot of us tend to get a wee bit impatient to say the least. Very good advice from my partner up here in the booth tonight. Chris Walsh talking about how sometimes with some guys, you know, maybe you don't want to have a, a rush to judgment if they're not one of those guys that's going to be throwing 95, 97 miles per hour. And that's not the case with Ongberg. So good for him indeed. That's 94 up around the letters, and Lutz not going to catch up to that. Two away in the inning, and that is only the third strikeout of the game by Shelby Miller. Miller, for a guy who throws as hard as he does, you would not consider him to be a strikeout pitcher. He's thrown 159 innings and has just slightly better than 100 strikeouts. Well, his strikeout ratio this year is down. 
Last year was at 23 percent strikeouts. Now it was 15.7. His his walks are up this year. Doesn't get any easier than that. Bunted right back to the mound. It's one, two, three for Miller. Still no score. Game one of this four game series. Unfortunately, Dylan Axelrod, the second batter of the game, strained his right oblique and gave way to David Holmberg. More on him in a moment. Shelby Miller, meanwhile, has only surrendered a total of two base hits. He has struck out three and surprisingly has not walked a batter. Of course, the Reds have not given him a chance to walk a batter. His pitch count still in the 50s. For the big story tonight. Chris talked about this young man at length. Is David Holberg. Well, when he pitched out of that jam in the fourth inning by striking out Molina, then getting Oscar Tavares to pop out for the third out, leaving the bases loaded. Now you can just see his confidence soar and threw the ball much differently than he did his first couple of times out. You locked in a scoreless game, and the Reds are go to the bullpen to bring in a new pitcher, Manny Parra, another left hander. Parr will be facing the latter third in the Cardinal lineup. We have the right handed batting. Well, actually, they're going to uh, send up a pinch hitter. Tavares is a left handed batting. And they're going to bring on right handed batting. Randall Grychuk, backup outfielder, minor leaguer. They brought up from the minor, uh, from the minor leagues. When the rosters expanded and a breaking ball by Parra misses one ball and one strike. Shot into right center field. It's on its way to the wall. And that'll be a pinch hit double in this scoreless game to begin the top half of the seventh inning. Well, Gritchick is another one of those we talked about this 2009 draft. He was a number one draft pick of the Angels, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. And he lines this ball into the right center field gap, gets his foot down, stays back, and that's a pretty good swing. Well, one would assume that Colton Wong will be up there to bunt. Miller's spot is due up next. Well, 
although looking down at that Cardinal bullpen, it doesn't appear as though they have any action down there. They're going to let Colton Wong swing away, it appears, with a pitcher spot due up next. Well, this is somewhat of a surprise, even though Miller is throwing the ball so well here tonight. Scoring chances have been few and far between. Tapper in the hole. The runner's coming. Here's a throw to third. One hop. Not going to be in time. That'll be an infield hit. And the Cardinals have him on the corners. Now the wild throw really right there. And the only thing that Todd Frazier could do is just try to field the ball. Not worry about trying to get a tag down. If that ball is on the money, they've got this guy. But looks like it slipped out of Cozart's hand. And all hands will be safe. So that puts a different spin on the entirely in the rest of this inning here with now the pitcher coming up with the first and third nobody out he will be up there to bat. And Miller has been a very good bunter this year he has 10 sacrifices Brian Price will. Make his way to the mound been a good hitter. Yeah not bad. What a eight out of forty three on the year that makes him one eighty six from pitcher standpoint that's not too bad. Well, the Reds have action out of their bullpen. And you have left handed batters in Carpenter and Jay to follow the pitcher. So you certainly believe he's going to stay with Manny Parra if everything's okay with Parra. And Parra will remain in the game. Now, remember, the Reds have one other left hander now that with the addition of David Holmberg out there, along with Parra, you have Ryan Denick. Who we saw make his major league debut when the Reds were in Baltimore. Well, after you have that meeting on the mound, Devin Mezzarocco going to make sure one more time that everybody's on the same page. Very, very good speed on the bases for the Cardinals here. the corners nobody out scoreless game we're in the seventh inning and but it foul for strike one looks like he tried to lay that down the right side of the field and just angled his bat wrong I mean he got it out there he's doing everything else right standing in the front of the batter's box keeping the bat level or the head of the bat above the knob One and one to Shelby Miller. And again. Bunts a ball foul and par in front of one ball and two strikes. And had the look of a safety squeeze because the runner at third was three quarters of the way down the line when contact was made on that ball. Halfway down the line anyway. A good bun and a safety squeeze is almost impossible to defend with any speed at all at third base. One ball and two strikes. Gets a bun down. Runner's going to stay at third. Parra will play to first. Give Miller to sacrifice his 11th on the year. And the Cardinals have runners at second and third with one out in the inning. 
find that kind of funny, really, because Miller had problem in that at bat, getting a bunt down on a low outside fastball. He jabbed at both of them, fouled them both off that he tried, and that time he come right back on the inner part of the plate with a breaking ball, where he would obviously feel a lot more comfortable, and he gets a bat head on it, drops it down, and gets a successful sacrifice. I, I, I call that getting into the hitter right there, rather than you're in the driver's seat. Hey, if you show me that you can't bunt an outside fastball, I'm keeping. I'm going to keep going out there until you show me that you can. Well, now a tall order here for Parra against Matt Carpenter. Infield in, no score. Runners at second and third. One out, we're in the seventh inning. And Parra going to work. Last ball misses. Carpenter is lined out hard to left. Grounded out to first. And had an infield hit his last time up. See his numbers with runners in scoring position. That's better than 20 points, better than his overall season average. So Carpenter, one of the few Cardinals who really has held up his end of the bargain. Batting in such situations this year, until recently, as we pointed out earlier, they've been on a roll lately. One oh pitch and that will drop in a base hit one run scores here comes long slide he's safe to nothing on a broken bat single by Matt Carpenter. Uh, Brian Price is looking at a Devin Mesoraco to see if indeed they did get this guy at the plate good throw by Jay Bruce. And that is very close. I imagine that they'll have Rob Coughlin in the video room review that and give the thumbs up or thumbs down to Jay Bell to see if they're going to want to ask for a review. I think he's got his hand in there. That's a good slide by Wong. Just a heads up play. Carpenter knocks in a pair, giving him 57 of those on the season. And the inning will continue for the center fielder, John Jay. Strike one. So Holmberg goes five and two thirds innings, allows four hits and no runs. Para has faced four batters, allowed three hits and a pair of runs. Sam LeCure getting loose in the bullpen a short while ago. He's ready if they need him. By the way, the five and two thirds relief outing by Holmberg tonight is that one is two and one. Is the longest, and boy, do we remember this game as though it were yesterday on May the 25th in 2011. That was that 19 inning game in Philadelphia. Carlos Fisher threw five and two thirds innings in that one. That's a game in which Wilson Valdez ended up the winning pitcher for the Phillies. That's exactly right. Boy, Fisher, remember that night? He really stepped up for the Reds he that did. night. Guy had been pitching in short relief in Louisville. They brought him up. He had pitched two or three innings, I think, what, two or three days before? And then went five and two thirds innings that night. I think he was a losing pitcher in that game. Well, you know what also shows you though, Tom, that there really isn't any more in, an, in a normal bullpen. And in September it's a different deal because you've got call-ups. But in a normal bullpen, there is no such thing anymore as a long reliever. So that's going to be all for Parry. He faces five batters, and the four that were trying to get on got on. He'll leave with two on, one out, trailing two nothing. Sam LeCure trots in from the bend. We'll take a timeout. Back in a moment.
Starkey. That's premiering Tuesday, September the 9th. That's tomorrow night only on FX. Two in, two on, one out in the Cardinal seventh inning. They lead 2 nothing. Matt Holliday, the batter, and now on to face him is right-hander Sam LeCure. Holiday is flying to left, struck out looking and single to left his last time up. And LeCure going to work. Ball one away. Pirates are winning their game, although just by a run, 2-1 in the sixth at Philadelphia. And the Marlins are teeing off on the Brewers. They have scored six times and still are batting in the top half of the third inning in Milwaukee. Atlanta, meanwhile, trailing the Nationals. 2-0 in the bottom of the seventh inning. Atlanta, the Pirates, Milwaukee. All duking it out for that second wild card spot in the National League. Boy, that one left out over the plate, and Holiday livid with himself that he fouled that one back. Swung the bat in frustration. Talked about how cold Holiday was to begin the year, especially with a long ball. Only five of them in the first 81 games of the year, but he's come on strong. He's hit four in the last week. Brian Price. Laid it out there pretty pure and simple and maybe Jim Day can add to this because he is frequently there before the games and after the games especially on the road comments made by price you know you look ahead to next year in the Reds starting rotation you know looking ahead to next year and depending on what they do and you know will they make moves. Do they feel like they can afford to keep everybody? They have everybody under control, if you will, for next year. Although guys are in line for a big bump arbitration wise, guys like Latos and Leak. Anyway, if everybody came back healthy, and he already went on record as saying Simon projects to be in the rotation. And Price said very clearly this bullpen has got to get it together. We have been so spoiled over the last handful of years. Reds have had, if not the best, one of the best bullpens in all of Major League Baseball, and that has not been the story this year. Jim, anything you'd like to add to that? Well, he's uh, gone on record saying nothing is guaranteed. They brought basically the same group back this year. But he's let them know that next year is not a given, that they're going to be a part of this bullpen. And one thing that he has said, though, is Jumbo Diaz, has pretty much in let bar anything unforeseen has pitched his way onto the 2015 roster. So there's one guy that is on the radar. Everyone else outside of Chapman now that they've traded Broxton on notice that it is not guaranteed you are going to be in that bullpen. Of course, the one thing the guy who just left the game has in his favor, Manny Parr is he has another year left on a two year contract. Sean Marshall another guy. I mean that is a guy the Reds have really missed and it's been the better part of two years. Rian two on Matt Holliday. Runners will not go and it swung on and fouled back out of play. If I'm not mistaken Marshall has a year left on his contract as well does he not. I believe you're right. So there might be a lot of spots up for grabs but we know frequently if guys are healthy money talks and well you know what walks and if Parra and Marshall are expecting big paydays looking ahead to next year both of them figure to be in that bullpen you see they've only 
had a chance to watch Marshall after 73 games his first year a very good year. 31 total games spanning all of 24 and a third innings the last two years. Runners go and it's in the air. And Phillips out to get it for the second out of the inning. And that's one of the things Tom that baseball people look at a fair amount of time when they start looking at relievers and they ask themselves all right well how many years in a row can a reliever pitch in say 60 or 70 games before you, you simply wear out your arm. I mean you take care of starting pitchers much more it seems like than you do relievers who are more or less dispensable and that is why and Chris, disposable. I and you and I talk about this all the time. It's why I could never understand why. And you explain to me why because he didn't do the great job as a closer. But I was always mystified. Why fans were so hard at times on David Weathers. Go back and look at that career. And how good that guy was year after year after year. Where have you gone David Weathers. Sports Service is celebrating 12 years. Why not look ahead to next season and watch every out of market game? Visit Reds.com for details. The inning began with Parra. Lacure does his job, retires the only batter he faces in Holiday. And now we get a look at the other lefty you mentioned, Chris Welsh, Ryan Dennick. I made his major league debut in Baltimore, so he is now only in his fourth ball game career wise. This is the kind of situation that you you bring him in for a purpose, really two purposes for Brian Price. Number one, of course, to try to get out of the inning, get a very tough left hander, Matt Adams, out. But number two, you want to get a little measure of Ryan Denick because going forward, this is the type of situation you expect to use him in. You come in and get one left hander out. Third base side, two balls and a strike.
Two and two to Adams. Cardinals have scored the first two runs of the game in this seventh inning. And both of them so far charged to Manny Parra. The two runners on base are his responsibility as well. And Dennett trying to get that final out. And boy. If it wasn't for bad luck, the Reds wouldn't have any luck at all. You get a strikeout swinging, but the runner will reach base safely, and they're loaded. the left-hander specifically to face the left-hander and now another pitching change will be made by Brian Price. We'll tell you about the new hurler when we come back. on Fox. Yankees will take on the Orioles on Fox and then later on Fox Sports 1 the Padres and the Diamondbacks. Now that's a big one. Action starts at 1230 Eastern on Fox continues at 730 Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. But now a right hander becomes the fourth pitcher used by the Reds in this inning trying to get that precious final out. And it's Pedro Villarreal. Well, he's either going to get it out or give up a run because there's nowhere to put Johnny Peralta coming to the plate. Two away in the inning, the bases are loaded. You have Carpenter down at third, Colt to uh, Jay John Jay at second base, and you have Matt Adams at first and a strike one to Peralta. 0 for two, lined out to left, had an extra base hit taken away his last time up. Reds have not had a pitcher register a strikeout without officially recording it out, as Sam Lequeur just did, or rather, Denick just did. There's a tapper foul since Anario del Rosario on May the 24th in 2010. Well, who keeps track of that kind of stuff? Joel Luckham, our statistician supreme. He's all over it. All over it. Are we missing when he's gone? Joel took the family on a nice little trip. 
along the uh, eastern seaboard. He had a chance to see Camden Yards while the Reds were there last week. Unfortunately, he picked the only bad weather night we had. That's when we had the rain delay to start the game. We had, what, one, two batters into the game, and the rain came for two hours? Well, he got to watch the Camden Yard grounds crew. How are you? I'd have that head on a swivel. <laughs> oh, and two on Peralta. Swung on, hit off the end of the bat. Well, you were. They'd like to have mine on a you stick. You were really, really, really going out of your way to, to talk to some of those guys over the next couple of days after wearing them out. All in good fun. Hey. They, do they didn't think it was that They fun. do know their way around a Mexican buffet. Like nobody's business. We'll just leave it at that. One ball and two strikes. For those of you that don't remember or you weren't with us, that was a night they were serving Mexican food up in the press area and the grounds crew, they were all eating uh, dinner. They were getting after it pretty good. And you wore them out for when the rains came, not getting the tarp out fast enough. Well, it didn't look like the, the rain was going to come. It probably surprised them. And when they did try to get it out, it got stuck. Gone swinging. Job. Nice job by Villarreal. So he's had a couple of good outings here lately. Cardinals get a couple of runs and lead 2 nothing. Let's take you back to yesterday around Major League Baseball. The big story was the ceremony at Yankee Stadium honoring Derek Jeter. That is Michael Jordan, greatest basketball player of all time in my imagination. It was a who's who of people. Cal Ripken Jr., Jeter's idol growing up, former Red Paul O'Neill there, David Cohn, Tino Martinez, Jorge Posada, Bernie Williams, Mariano Rivera, Joe Torre. Just to name a few, it was a 45 minute ceremony in pure Jeter fashion after he spoke. He's like, let's get on with this. We got a game to play. That's really all he cared about. Now, Jeter leads the team onto the field before each and every game, and he did yesterday as well. However, they let him run out by himself. He didn't know it until he looked back. So a classy move by his teammates. And also Tom and Chris, they did not retire his number two yesterday, nor did they put a monument out there in Monument Park. Because, of course, you have one old big ceremony. You better, you got to have two more for those. So you can expect number two to be retired for sure. For sure is right. Thank you, Jim Day. I had a buddy of mine who was at that ceremony over the weekend and said uh, it was just an incredible place to be. 
Think of all the World Series titles, all the big hits, big plays, great moments. Look, Derek Jeter. He's already said next year he's going to get away from it all. You're not going to watch him uh, stepping into the broadcast booth. Of course, he can always change his mind. Maybe he will change his mind. But said he wants to get away from everything for a while and, and do a whole lot of whatever it is he wants to do. Two and two to count on Pena, and he's gone swinging. That is only the 63rd pitch of the night for Shelby Miller, and one one out into the seventh inning. Well, that would explain why he still has a little giddy up on that fastball. Late life is one way the hitters put it when they see him. It looks like it comes out of his hand at a certain speed, and then all of a sudden accelerates. Look at all those single-digit wow. pitch counts the Reds had. It, you know, this is really amazing because here's a guy that. Throughout the entire season, he's, he's walked 71 batters in 159 innings. He's almost averaging what, oh, more than four batters per nine innings. And the Reds really have not given him a chance yet. Now, to his credit, he's thrown a lot of first pitch strikes. On a first pitch strikes, I'm told 14 and 21, not bad, but not lights out. But he pitched a very good game his last time out. And when you get a guy like this kind of an arm on a little bit of a roll where he finds his release point and his breaking ball and can spot the fastball, that's what they're looking for. The Cardinals are going down the stretch. You may remember it was 2012 when he first came up to the major leagues that Shelby Miller made his first major league start against the Reds. It was October 3rd. And he pitched six innings of one hit, seven strikeout baseball. That went down the right field line, but there to get it for the second out. And the first two retired here in the Reds' seventh inning. Richick stayed in the game by the way to play right field after he hit for Tavares and you may remember his double started that two run rally came up as a pinch hitter against Manny Parra. You know, the Cardinals every year seem to to have a lot going on with their pitching staff in terms of moving pieces and moving parts. Maybe not every year but. You remember the one year they used what eight different closers before they finally settled on Jason Mott when they went into the World Series. And they've had other years where starters have been in and out of the rotation. They've had that again this year. I mean even the closers saying last year they they had Mujica was their closer the entire year. Trevor Rosenthal did not get his first save until the last week of the regular season. And yet they go right in and next thing you know they're playing in another league championship series. And now here this year they go out and you know, they make big deals when everybody thinks they need offense. They make big deals to get two starting pitchers in John Lackey and Justin Masterson and with Waka coming back Masterson is now in the bullpen. He's not even in their starting five anymore. That gives you an idea of the kind of depth the Cardinals have when they have all hands on deck as far as pitching is concerned. I mean, a lot of teams, they trade for Justin Masterson, and they're running him out there every five days no matter what. Well, it would be no matter what here in St. Louis because he has not pitched well at all for the Cardinals since being traded over. That one pulled foul by Devin. 
He had a double to left center field his last time up. You know, the other thing the Cardinals have done, Tom, really since 2011, and that was the first time that, well, not the first time, but they won the World Series in 2011, but they have probably played as many games throughout the course of the season and postseason as any team in baseball since then. Well, they played more, period. You're right. So because they, they won the World Series in 11, now we'll talk about it next inning. Well, they played in the at least the LCS in every year of the last yeah. three years. And they know how to win late in the year. Couple of mighty good ones right there. We will not see Adam Wainwright in this series. He had a complete game win yesterday. We will see Johnny in this series. Our IGS bringing the energy. Wade Owen Wainwright, too, in this series already with 17 wins, joining Clayton Kershaw and Madison Bumgarner. Look at that ERA by Kershaw. Wow. All those guys are wow, but one seven is just extraordinary. It really is. I mean, he's like a robot. But can he get it done this year in the playoffs? This Cardinal team beat him twice last year. So now Villarreal will start an inning clean. He came on with a bases loaded and two outs to fan Peralta. Cardinals got both of their runs off Manny Parra in the seventh inning. So here we are in the eighth and it's a two nothing ball game. Yadier Molina hitless tonight. Rounded a second. Struck out looking with the bases loaded back in the fourth inning against David Holmberg and tapped out to Holmberg. That was a final out recorded by the Reds left hander. And for those of you just joining us tonight, boy, what a job he did. Five and two thirds innings of four hit shutout baseball in relief of the injured Dylan Axelrod. Pirates starting to blow it open in Philadelphia, a five to one lead there. Atlanta on the board, but trails by a run in DC two to one. 
And Miami still kicking around Milwaukee, but a long way to go in that one. 6 2, Marlins in front. Brandon Phillips, and that's the way it starts here in the eighth. Well, as you can tweet, continue to tweet your photos using hashtag Ohio Fan Photo. Take a look at our fan photo of the game tonight, brought to you by AT&T. Out in the outfield, very nice shot. Thank you, Eric. Two of his favorite ladies enjoying a beautiful afternoon to the ballpark. Again, he had the double and scored the first run in that two run seventh inning. I mean, those two balls are stung. Well, he really winds up, doesn't he? Gets that bat and bat, kind of lifts his L back elbow up and just drops the head. Cardinals only had a total of six base runners through the first six innings of this game. They had four hits and Holmberg walked two batters. They now have six base runners in an inning and a third against the Reds bullpen here tonight. Four of those six reaching against Parry allowed three hits and a walk and was charged with both runs in the game. Right-hander Pat Nishik getting ready in the bullpen. You have the pitcher spot Shelby Miller due up next. And Colton Wong with one out of the batting. And a fastball away. 1-0 on Colton Wong. Flair into center and Billy will track it down. One away. Or two out, I beg your pardon. Molina lined out to begin the inning. Mike Matheny is trying to get this Cardinal team to the playoffs for what would be the third straight time. Since he took over this franchise after Tony La Russa led them to a World Series title and then retired as manager of the Cardinals. Matheny had him in the league championship series his first year, got him to the World Series a year ago. Shelby Miller will bat after all. And a breaking ball away from him. One ball and one strike. Miller has pitched brilliantly here tonight. He's only allowed two hits. 
A single by Brandon Phillips with one out to center field in the second inning. A leadoff double to Devin Mezzarocco in the fifth. And that's all. No walks, four strikeouts. One and one. And a fastball is high. Reds and Cardinals will be here for three more, and then the Reds will only have one more homestand remaining here in 2014. We'll have night games tomorrow and Wednesday, and an afternoon till 12:35 on Military Appreciation Day on Thursday. That ball hit hard, but Bruce is there, and the inning is over. Bottom of the eighth, Reds are only down two nothing. And they let him back in the top of the eighth, and he's out there obviously on the mound here in the bottom of the eighth. Well, he has been ultra efficient with his pitches, and we'll show you some of those pitches on our Mazda pitch by pitch. He has not walked the batter tonight. He has struck out four, has had a fastball that he's dialed up there anywhere between 92 to 95 miles an hour. Got a double play when he needed it out of Jay Bruce early in the ballgame. And he's really mixed his pitches up quite well for a guy that has had control problems all year long. He has shown none of that tonight. Our Mazda pitch by pitch, and there is a line for Miller. Seven innings of two hit shutout baseball. Only 76 pitches here. Pitching now in the bottom of the eighth inning. And that's what uh, 22 batters he has faced in the game tonight. Is that right? Yep. And 76 pitches. Well, he's had six three batter innings, not all one, two, three with a double play in the second, but I still call a one, two, three when it's a, a three batter inning. Yep. Well, one of the guys who's reached against him leads things off, and that'll be Brandon Phillips. He had a single with one away in the center field in front of that double play ground ball off the bat of Jay Bruce.
Cardinals well aware that the Pirates are winning their game and the Brewers are losing their game. You rest assured they're taking a peek out at that board in left field. When you're playing like the Cardinals are playing right now, that's that old adage about the horse beginning to sniff the barn. I mean, you're not there yet because it's still so early in September. Just starting now our second week, so it's more than conceivable a team could lose a division championship with a lead the Cardinals have right now. But their confidence is probably at a season high, especially after rolling right through Milwaukee over the weekend. And that one bounced into center field. So now all of a sudden, the Reds will send the tying run to the plate. Looks like Mike Matheny's going to come get Shelby Miller. Not going to take a chance of perhaps this one sneaking away from him. Three hits and in seven plus innings tonight by Miller. Pat Nishik will take over in relief. Fingertips follow Reds reporter Kevin Goheen from FoxSportsOhio.com on Twitter at FSOhio underscore K Goheen for the latest news and stories on the Reds. There's Kevin in the far right. He's all over everything that is Reds and for that matter everything all over the state of Ohio. He's had a lot to write about over the weekend. It's a lot of college football happenings in the state of Ohio. This is a really an odd move if you look at it from a, a baseball book perspective. The Cardinals have six left handers in their bullpen available. Yeah, Mike Matheny will go with the right hander Pat Nietzsche. How about that? 68 miles per hour. And no hitter is looking for that on the first pitch from a guy coming out of the bullpen. Now he may not get another one in this at bat 68, but you're definitely not looking for that on the first pitch. Comes back in 91. Mark Nishik now he's going to go to his hat a couple of times as he kind of gets a grip on that baseball. Wasn't too all that much long ago that the Cardinals made a big deal about a little spot on the top of Bronson Royo's cap. Remember that controversy? Sure. There's a guy I certainly hope. I know we're all really hoping. I'm speaking for all Reds fans. And certainly those of us who are fortunate enough to be around him. You hope that Bronson Arroyo comes back at 100% full strength next year. So 
Early pitching for the Arizona Diamondbacks had never missed a start in his professional career until this season. Had Tommy John surgery, and I would imagine that he's probably good for another 10 years now. He might be, knowing him. Flip that one up there at 70, and Bruce way out in front. And that'll be a pop up to right, one away in the inning, and Heisey coming up. You know, we talked about it before. If the Cardinals should get, you know, all the way to the World Series, and the American League has home field advantage in the World Series, well, they only have to look around their dugout for Blaine. Two Cardinal pitchers gave up all the runs in the All Star game to the American League. Adam Wainwright and the man on the mound, Pat Nisha. One away and high easy to batter. Strike one. Cozart has been called back into the Reds dugout. Jack Hanahan will come up and bat for him. And again, foul back over the screen and out of play. Well, I had a pretty good cut that time. Logan Andrusik, the right hander, a roll to Chapman, the left hander. Just in case, getting loose down in that Reds bullpen. Reds have gone through Axelrod for one out. Holmberg five and two thirds outstanding innings out of the bullpen four hit shutout baseball double play ball all the way here and that's the way it's going to end in the Reds eighth inning so Nisha gets the job done we're on our way to the ninth Cardinals in front two nothing. Edition. Expanded highlights, interviews, and more. It's Reds Live. It's presented by Performance Kings Honda and the Kings Auto Mall. Well, the 2015 schedule was released today, and let's look at some highlights. The season will open up basically a week later next year. Opening day in Cincinnati, April 6th. The Pirates will be in town. The first homestand will be the Pirates 
and the St. Louis Cardinals, and that will kick off 22 straight games versus the National League Central to start the season. Next year's Inter League opponent is the American League Central. Tigers will visit GABP as well as the Twins, Indians, and Royals. The Reds will go on the road to face the White Sox, Royals, Indians, and Tigers. And then at the tail end of the season, as expected, 28 of the final 34 in the division. But the biggest highlight of the season, July 14th, the All-Star Game finally returns to Cincinnati at Great American Ballpark. And everyone hoping for a better 2015. The schedule looks pretty good and looking forward to it. It's interesting, the date of the All-Star Game, just the number of that date. With all the talk about Pete Rose and, you know, will baseball find a way to reinstate Rose? And how much participation will he have in all the All-Star Game festivities? The 14th day of July. There's that number again. Interesting, is it not? I'm not sure if I would go that far. Call it interesting. It will be interesting, though, everything around the All Star game, especially as it relates to P. Rose, if there is anything to relate to there. Mm -hmm. so well, we've, seen, we've seen a lot of those line drives, running catches by outfielders tonight. Let's take a look at our John Morrell hot dog play of the game. and. The base hit broken bat single off the end of the bat by Carpenter but the Reds have the infield drawn in and he just dumped it into right field driving in so far the only two runs of this game are John Morrell hot dog play of the game. You know that's a play right there Tom and it would be great to look back on it again. That's a play right there that. Under the old rule where a catcher could block the base, there's a good chance that that's an out in favor of the Reds because Mezzarocco would have been easily be able to put his leg in the way of the runner because the throw was right on the money. And he probably would have been able to keep Colton Wong from getting to the plate there and recorded an out in the old days before this year when you're not allowed to block the plate without the ball. And very doubtful that Wong would have tried to run him over. Talking about this Reds bullpen, and and we heard from Jim Day about some of the comments that Brian Price made about you know, guaranteed spots or not guaranteed spots. Put this in perspective for a minute. The Cardinals bullpen this year, and and really overall, it has not been anywhere near the bullpen they thought they were going to have when the year began. Rosenthal has been good, but he's been shaky through streaks during the year. Carlos Martinez, a primary right-handed setup guy, has not pitched well most of the year. Has spent part of the season in the setup role. Kevin Segrist, their dominant left-hander from last year, has virtually been a non-factor this year due to injury and ineffectiveness. That went off the body of Villarreal and will dribble into right field. On his way to third is Wong, and hopefully Villarreal is all right. That was a hard hit one hopper off the bat of Holiday. Well, I don't know where that got him, but he was wincing right from the get go. Looks like at the top of the forearm. Or you just try to cover up and hope you get some glove on it. Meanwhile, John Jay going first to third easily. They're going to take Holiday out of the game. Earlier, we saw the assistant trainer, Stevie Bauman, go out, and now it's a head trainer, Paul Asar, to look at the right arm of Villarreal.
Pedro's going to try to stay in there. You know, we're starting to talk about the bullpens. The Cardinal bullpen for the season has 19 losses. And bear in mind now, this has been a rotation that has been a starting rotation. That one thrown all the way to the screen. He's looking for another ball. But it's a Cardinal starting rotation that has been in disarray. So they brought guys from the bullpen into the starting rotation. Yet their bullpen has a total of 19 losses on the year. The Reds bullpen since the All-Star break has 14 losses just since the break. Well, you know since the All-Star break, the Reds and the Texas Rangers are tied with having the worst two records in baseball. They've only won 16. They've lost 32. So the bullpen has spread it just about equally with the starting rotation as well. Well, Villarreal tried to give it a go on a couple of pitches, and now he's going to leave the game. We certainly hope he's all right. He was doing a good job here tonight. So. of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Well, Red Sands, you can guarantee the opportunity to buy 2015 All-Star Game tickets by becoming a Red season ticket holder with plans starting under $9 per seat. So, I mean, you're talking about all the excitement of the All-Star Game, the Home Run Derby, Fan Fest, and more. It all comes to the Queen City. Make sure you are there. You guarantee your All-Star tickets. 765-7600. Now, just like David Holmberg, because of an injury to the pitcher before, he'll have as much time as he wants to warm up Logan on Drusick well while he does that we will say happy birthday to a young lady who made her visit out to Great American Ballpark over the weekend prior to her birthday her son Mike brought her out and want to wish Ann Murray a happy 82nd birthday and if I'm a day late on that I'm sorry but I think it's today and thanks for coming out and visiting with us and hope you have a great birthday and hope your son Mike continues to take such good care of you no doubt about it. Hey, and by the way, we'd also like to send out a happy anniversary, 65th anniversary. Earl and Grace Howard from Chatteroy, West Virginia. So Earl and Grace Howard, happy 65th anniversary. That is wonderful. God bless you both.
So Logan Andrusik comes on. Cardinals have him on the corners with one away, leading 2-0. We're in the top of the ninth inning. Second Reds pitcher to leave this game is Villarreal with an injury. Axelrod on the second batter of the game. And now Villarreal after taking the hot smash off the forearm area. Way back in the right center field. And that is a three run big fly by Matt Adams to bust this thing open at 5 0. Hits it the long way, and it is our flamethrower at 95 miles an hour. He just turns around this fastball by Logan Andrusik for our Cholula hot sauce flamethrower pitch of the night, and right down Broadway with 95 is hitting speed. This guy, in a short amount of time, is becoming the Lance Berkman against Reds pitching. Of course, for better than a decade, Berkman just absolutely pulverized Reds pitching. And although Matt Adams is only really in his first full year, he got a large chunk of playing time last year, but this is his first full year in the major leagues. And Adams, in just 23 games, has six home runs. And 14 runs batted in. All the while, a batting average of up over 370. Hitless game at four at bats. And that's strike three to win the inning. But a huge blow delivered by Adams. Two nothing becomes five nothing. Reds will bat the bottom of the night. Tri-State Chevy dealer today. 
And by Cincinnati Children's Hospital, who ranks third in the country on the U.S. News and World Report's 2014 Best Children's Hospitals in America. Certainly, we say hello and send all our best wishes, thoughts, and prayers to those watching over at Cincinnati Children's Hospital tonight. We're along the banks of the mighty Ohio, where a number of changes for the Cardinals on defense. They lead 5-0 after the three-run home run by... Matt Adams in the top of this ninth inning. And the new pitcher is left-hander Sam Freeman. Well, they've only needed three on the night. Shelby Miller did his job. Seven innings of three hit shot out baseball. Pat Nisha came in to get out of the jam after Miller gave up a base hit to Brandon Phillips. Got an out and then a double play ball. Out of Chris Heisey, now Sam Freeman in for game number 36. Have a pretty good year overall as Freeman. Guy's got a good arm, and you wonder where it comes from. I mean, he's listed at 5'11. I'm not sure if he's even that tall, but 165 pounds, and it comes roaring right out of there in the mid 90s. This is the kind of guy where if all of a sudden they had enough belief in his command because you saw the 15 walks in 30 innings. I mean, that's not brutal, but it's not good. But with his stuff, as you mentioned, Chris, this is the kind of guy that when you get to the playoffs, this is a guy that can help you win a World Series well, he's if got, he's on his game. You're right, Tom. And he's very similar to a guy they had a couple years ago in Carlos Martinez, who came up out of nowhere, throwing mid 90s, had good command, had a had a period of time there that he was really the most valuable pitcher they had out of their bullpen. And you're always looking for that. And it's great to be able to go down the minor leagues and pull guys up that are throwing 95. Reds were able to do that with. Jumbo Diaz this year, but as you know, you start looking around at some of the teams conceivably that you might be facing in the postseason in the team's left-handed batters. And Freeman's getting a lot of people out. I mean, opponents are batting 244. But you start with the Dodgers. Adrian Gonzalez. Andre Ethier. And they've got other guys off their bench they can bring in. There's a broken bat roll to short, and this will be the second out in the ninth inning. So Bryce Harper, when you're playing the NAB Washington Nationals, and Adam LaRoche. They start looking at, say, the Pirates get in. Some of the left handed batters they have coming off you know, that are in their regular lineup. So the Atlanta Braves, they have a pile of Freddie Freeman. Is Sam Freeman. He might be locking up with Freddie, no relation, in a big moment of the postseason. Always be interesting. Two guys with the same name. Reds have three hits tonight. And a sinking liner, a diving catch to end the game. Well, the man who started the rally in a scoreless game when he came up as a pinch hitter with a double in the seventh inning, Grichik makes a diving catch to end the game. So the Reds are shut out for the 14th time this year. They leave one man on base in a 5 nothing defeat in the opener of four against the St. Louis Cardinals. That's actually pretty amazing, Tom, when you consider that how difficult it is to leave a runner, one runner on base. The Cardinals, by contrast, left 10 on base tonight. Even though they only scored five runs, they did have 10 hits. Many opportunities to blow the game open early on. They didn't do that.